welcome to the section number two we're going to check out some of the most common fittings fittings are let's say accessories used used for specific tasks for example jump pipes literally you have one pipe and you have another pipe well if you just put them together well you're going to have leakage you need to add a fitting and packaging and all that stuff in order to join them together it's also used for splitting for example you have your pipe and you want to I don't know maybe split it into two different streams because one goes in the recycle and the other one goes to the reactor while well, you have it there you want maybe to increase or decrease the size for example you know that operating at low diameter will imply a very high velocity so you want to lower the velocity you just need to use an expansion your accessory and you're going to decrease the velocity not only that maybe you want to change of direction if you are for example you need to pump something from here and you want it to pump it to the top well you need to change the direction of that and finally some flow rate measurements there are also devices use it to for example calculate the pressure drop and with the same pressure drop you calculate the speed of the flow and with the speed of the flow you calculate the volumetric flow rate and here I have plenty of fittings for example this is expanser this is a splitter splitter this is elbow to change direction change direction and so on you can have many different types of them depending on the set of piping and for example when using fittings uh, depending on the size you may use on the thread seal tape this is a small one you may use plastic flanges also when they are small and low pressure of course but when you have huge uh, or at least big piping systems you will start using metallic flanges which you are going to see in the next slides and you will start using welding you will need to literally weld join the metals in order to sustain high pressure and high velocity so what do I mean with thread seal tape is essentially material which is teflon probably you've seen it here when your plumber works or so maybe when you take out this you see this little white stuff this is done in order so the fluid goes here and because it has a package it won't leak so this won't happen the same here goes of course it will go like a huge pipe like this and instead of the fluid of course it's going to go here but maybe if it wouldn't have this white stuff it will go here 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 and start leaking right here this is why we use this thread seal tape plastic flanges are also used to avoid leakage so it comes in many forms the most basic one will be this one right here or this one right here and are used in plumbing because we have small piping devices and low pressures and it's relatively okay because they can withstand a relative normal pressure but eventually if you're going to go big you need to start using metallic flanges and what's that essentially is this part right here in which you get this and then you screw each one of these and you will have a lot of pressure applied and the leakage will be less probable so here it goes this is the flange right here As you can see it has many holes in order to join it with screws here goes one type of screw actually even the screw has like this shape in order to avoid leakage more metallic flanges for example we have the typical one we have this one I don't know why would you like that but the normal ones are like this just the more holes I think normally is the better but normally you will take more time in order to install and uninstall it so you will also want to avoid a huge amount of these ones right here they join two pipes pipe the white pipe and the gray pipe they're joined of course there's the here this is the flange right here and you join just two pipes and eventually you want to weld it guys because if you're going to work for example in the sea or the ocean or even 
in the atmosphere you want to avoid any kind of leakage inside or outside so you don't want your fluid or water going out and you don't want water uh, sorry water in the case of ocean and air in the case of atmospheric presence you don't want air going inside so you're going to weld so plenty of people ask me through social media such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, via email and so on. They ask me if they can get free access to the course or if I have scholarships or whatever. No I don't, but I do offer a free trial so you can click here, you can try it for free. You are unsure to commit? Well you can always join this 3 day free trial, so click here and it will send you to here. And you got the option right here, the three day free trial, you pay now zero dollars. And you have three days access, you can cancel whenever you want. You just gotta select right here. You will get access to all this material for three days. This is, look how the pattern goes, 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 one. Up, one down, one down, below, 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 and the other one goes above. And yeah, literally, they join three pipes here into the master pipe which will be here so probably if you had this flow it will crash go to the left to the right and some will go to here and to here we also might use some bases supports or yeah, well, essentially anything that will avoid the pipe from moving rolling being hit by anything and so on so imagine if you had this Right here, well, many people will drop, will kick it, maybe they will drop stuff or whatever. And if it starts to rain, well, the water will be in contact with the pipe and you don't want that. So it's better to install this mountain base, mounted base, and you have your pipe here. And actually it's better to work here, imagine having a welder, it's better to weld here than in the floor. So this right here goes down the pipe and this right here supports the pipe and this is only not only used in the rooftops you might use it along the highway you have huge pipes going at high altitude and not only that you want to add these materials in order to avoid movement imagine the wind goes by and it starts moving you don't want that you want them to be rigid and static some other examples pipe will go through here and well, there are many dimensions of course and standards they give you the pipe size, the standard height for example this will be the standard height pipe size will be this one here and the base width for example this one right here and so on a little bit more on support we have many supports right here and this one I showed you before this is a little bit more let's say for piping which requires literally static presence so you don't want anything to move you got these extra stabilizers and also hangers it's very common hangers is literally to hang pipes you are in a room you may find this pipe right here and you want to hang it instead of just installing it because if you don't use hangers you will eventually bend the pipe due to gravity or due to its weight and you don't want that. That's very bad for the pipe, for the material, and for statics use. So we have here goes our pipe, and yeah, it essentially is everything. You may have many types of hangers, but just to get the basics is something that will have this, and you will pass your pipe through here. And of course, you want to have a lot of support. The more support you have here, the less it starts moving. Now pipe contraction and expansion, as the name implies, well, you have a huge pipe, hopefully you know that when it's very sunny day you will increase the temperature, maybe, I don't know, maybe 40 Celsius degrees, which in Fahrenheit it's about 100 Fahrenheit, and imagine at night we'll drop the temperature at maybe 15 Celsius, which is something around 65 Fahrenheit. So this extremely change on temperature will make the pipe expand and contract. So we need to use these little guys which will help us to expand and contract the pipelines with no worries. For example, 
you can find it here if this pipe expands if this pipe expands well it's like a spring it's going to contract right here and if this pipe uh, let's say expands and this pipe expands then you're going to have this spring more relaxed and there are in many systems it's very important because you cannot assume that the total length will be the same length at the same like standard if you have temperature about here I don't know 10 Celsius do not expect to have the same length at I don't know maybe 80 Celsius and there are also very simple ones this will be used in a PVC piping line which is not that complex actually it's small to avoid the let's say the destruction the explosion of the pipeline now this is pretty common if you want to change the direction and join to tubes you will use a pipe elbow there are many measurements of pipe elbow for example one fourth and one eighth and so on depends on how smooth do you want them this is very non smooth this is a smooth one the more smooth you have it the or the smoother it goes the less friction you have uh, yeah actually elbows is a totally let's say developed industry you have many many standards for example the ends, the, the pipe diameter, pipe diameter, also diameter, 90 elbow, 45 elbow, 180 return, for, for example this one. And yeah, you have many standards, 2 with 3 and so on. Of course, you have a lot. You have also elbows that start maybe with, I don't know, they started with 2 inches and then they deliver 1 inch. So they work as an expander as well, uh, in this case reducer which are here. Pipe reducer or expander, it sounds fancy, but actually is just to, for example, this is the most basic one. You have this, let's say it's about 20.5 millimeters. And this side right here is 26 millimeters. So you are increasing it by 25%. And yeah, as you can see, you are literally expanding the, the pipeline. Of course, there are many of fancy ones. Look at this, this is huge. So once you're done starting all the course theory and practice, probably you want to get your final test done. So go here, probably you've been following quiz one, two, three, four through six. And once you're done, you will want to check out what was your experience. So go and check either the first section or the second section of the quizzes. This is about 150 questions. Yes, I know it's a lot, but it's covering the whole course. This is the recommended score you should take. And recommended time is about two hours, but actually if you study or at least you know what's the course about, you should be taking around 30 to 40 minutes. And yeah, you have plenty of questions. Once you're done, you can ask and check out your grades by submitting your answers. You can find very smooth ones, for example this one, it goes slow, slow, slow. Once again, the, the smoother the pattern, the less friction you will have. This, well, you will see they crash here, they crash here, and then they move here to the center and move. This is high friction one. As I told you before, there are elbows that act as a reducer expanders, so this one right here is high diameter, this one here is the low diameter, so let's say this is twice as this one, you will have this velocity will be one fourth and this velocity will be the complete one. Also you have very fancy ones, maybe you just see this one, for example, you just will see this, and you will not notice that you have a uh, reducer right here, you are reducing the flow because this right here actually is something like this but once again we got an expander, it goes away you can see this diameter 1 versus diameter 2 and in how much let's say length do, do they move it it's called H is D1, D2 once again eccentric reducer, concentric reducer and so on
Nice, we're almost done. We will also have some fittings or accessories such as measuring devices. We're going to see that in another block, but for an instance, we have this measurement device that will go through the pipe right here. And it will measure the pressure drop. With the pressure drop, they will calculate the velocity. With the velocity, they calculate the area and get the volumetric flow rate. So you just go here. The person watches here and reads, I don't know, maybe 10 cubic meters per second. When it is actually measuring a drop of pressure right here and converting it to velocity and then to volumetric flow rate. This one is pretty similar. Uh, actually, it goes here. Uh, it measures pressure 1, pressure 2. The difference in pressure is delta P. You do your mechanical energy equation and you will find out the velocity and with the velocity you get the volumetric flow rate guys so actually here is the P1, P2 you get the delta P and calculate velocity and you're done so this we're going to see or analyze it and study in applied fluid dynamics course number or block number 4 there are plenty other measuring devices I will explain them a little bit more on the AFD block number 4. And we're done guys! This was a free preview. If you want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here if you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.